How's it going everybody and welcome back to this Mantine course. Last video we learned how to set up a basic Mantine TypeScript React app on our computer and in today's video we're going to be learning about the Mantine provider. Now this provider is a little bit confusing to understand how to actually implement it to an application but I'll do my best to show you how to use it. And without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so I went ahead and opened up the Mantine documentation and I went into the Mantine provider. What is a Mantine provider? Well, according to their documentation, it's a simple component that allows you to change the theme globally. It is not required if you decide to use the default theme. What does that mean? What that means is that basically, whatever this Mantine provider component encapsulates, it'll provide that custom theme to every single item within it. So in this example, this Mantine provider has a custom theme for a font family of Open Sans and is applying this font to every single piece of text within the app. Before we actually use this, let's go ahead and talk about the theme objects that we can actually customize within Mantine and there's a whole lot of items. Alright, so there's a whole lot of properties that you have available within the theme shape and we're not going to be using every single individual item here. We'll be using some of them, but let's just talk about what these even are. So if you see right here, we have DIR is equal to LTR, RTL. We have loader is equal to OVL or bars or dots. These are all the properties that you can give it for the Mantine provider hook. So if you have loader right here, you can, if you were to use a loader, you can either have an oval type of loader. We can have either a bars or we can have a dots. We'll be working with this and we'll show you how to use this. We have a color scheme, either we can be light or dark. We have a date format, it can only be a string. And we have colors here and you might notice next to the colors it says record. Record basically means object. And then it says tuple, tuple basically means an array. And it says here 10, so it would just be an array at least of 10 indices of strings. And then it says CSS properties. That is just going to be the CSS property. That's it. At a very simple level, that's all you have to worry about. Once you work with a few of these, then you will just understand how to work with all of them, basically. So let's actually get our hands dirty and figure out how to use these. All right, so I went ahead and opened up the app that we were working on in the last video. And so we have a simple button here, but we should add some more content here so we can really test the limits of how to use the Mantine provider. So underneath my div, I'm going to create a paper tag from the Mantine core, and I'll add a text tag as well. Same thing from the Mantine core. And I will just call it, this is a simple text tag. And I'll just go ahead and copy this and I'll paste it underneath here as well. And then I'll just put in some gibberish here just so we have some more text there. Perfect. And so underneath all of this, I'll go ahead and copy this button and I'll make another one. And underneath this too, I'll make a simple loader from the Mantine core. And if we actually go inside of the app, we should see a bunch of stuff here. So we have our simple page, our simple paper right here, two buttons and a loader. So let's go ahead and actually provide some Mantine provider styling to these items. All right, so I'm gonna go back into my app and I'm gonna encapsulate all of these items in a Mantine provider tag. So I'll do Mantine provider and I'll copy, whoops, copy this and I'll put it right down here. Perfect. So to make this work, like we saw in the documentation, you need to add theme is equal to two curly braces and inside of there, if I were to press windows, whoops, not that, control space, we'll see that we have all these items to work with. The first thing that we're gonna do is let's go ahead and change the font of all of these texts to a open sans. So if I do font family, open sans and I save it, we should ideally see every single text here is changed to open sans. Now you might notice that the loader doesn't change to open sans because there's there's no text there. Perfect. So now if I go back into the app, let's add some more styling to it. So if I were to do color scheme, this is a really cool thing about the Mantine library itself is that most things already have a color scheme to it that's dark and light. And I'll show you guys how to actually use that in the next 
course video. So I'll just put in a simple dark theme right here. And if I go in back into the app, we should see that our paper and the text inside of it is automatically dark mode. Perfect. Now if I go back into the app again, let's go ahead and change all of the font sizes to be something else. So font size ziz, and I'll do a object. And inside of the object, I'll do an MD. So before I do MD, let's just do this real quick. Let's do control space, and we'll see that we have a bunch of options here, large, medium, small, XL, and XS. So this just basically means that we're gonna apply a certain size to all of these types of text sizes. So in our case, all of these texts already have a MD on them. So I'm, just, I'm gonna just do MD, and I'll do, let's say, to be 100% sure that this is working, I'll do like 90. And if I go back into the app, we'll see that it's not working because we need a we need a comma there. So if I go back into the app, we'll see, perfect, it's showing 90 font size right here. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit smaller. So I'll just do like 12. Next thing, let's work on the radius for the actual paper. And the way that we can do that is we just have to do radius. Again, if I were to do control space, we'll see large, medium, small, extra large, extra small. In our case, the paper is actually set at small. And I'll just do, let's do like 232. And this should be basically really smooth along the edges, just like that. Perfect. So if I were to go back into the app and remove this, we'll see that originally it was a lot more boxier. All right, let's talk about color. In my opinion, this is by far the most complicated part of this entire process is understanding how to apply colors to certain components inside of the Mantine provider. But it's fairly simple once you get a hang of it. So right here, we see how it says your record and tuple. I'll show you guys exactly how to use this in a bit. But if we go into the documentation and we see this right here, it says extend theme. And I open that up. And if I scroll a little bit down, we'll see here called default colors. Mantine uses open color in default themes with some additions. Each color has 10 shades. So this is a little bit weird. I don't know why Mantine does it like that, but you would need to actually have 10 indices of colors to choose from. And the library that Mantine uses is called open color. So if you open that up, we'll see all these colors that are available to us. These are more than enough colors for most people's needs. And so let's go ahead and actually use some of these colors and override some of the colors that are already present in most of the components itself. All right, so I went ahead and split the screen into two so it's a little bit easier for you guys to understand how this works. So after the font sizes, I'm gonna do colors. Well, what the heck is that? Colors. And the record is, a, is an object. And then it says here, let's see here, what does it say again? It says, string so the string that we're going to be replacing is called blue and inside of there it says a tuple which is an array and it asks us for at least 10 different tuples or 10 different array indices so i'll just do 10 strings here really quickly two three four five and i'll just copy these All right, so now we have 10 indices, and inside of the open color library, I'm gonna go ahead and just click on all of these, well, just randomly click on them, and I'll just pick out a whole bunch of different colors. So I like some indigo, I like some cayenne, I like me some orange. I'm feeling a little yellowy, well, yellow 70, uh, lime nine, why not, why not? Let's go with, uh, Let's go teal this time. Let's try a little bit of teal in life. Let's hit up some indigo once again. I think we already hit it up. Uh, of course, we need some grape, even though grapes are not colored purple. And of course, we need some red. All right, perfect. So now, let me just format this real quick. There we go. So now we have 10 colors. Let's go ahead and apply some of these colors to some of these items right here. All right, so now if we actually go back into wrap, Funny enough, some of these colors are already applied to some of the components, like the loader has the orange, 
and the buttons have the grape color. So what if you want to actually select a specific index from this array right here? It's really simple. You have two different ways of approaching this. First one is probably the easiest is inside of the actual Mantine provider, outside of the theme, you can do styles with two curly braces and we can target the specific thing we want. So button, and then we can do smooth curly brace, theme, arrow function, smooth curly brace, and then really curly braces. I don't know their specific names and I will never learn them, but then we can do root and then we can do background color and we can do theme dot colors dot blue and let's say we select the very first indice which was I think like a reddish color so if we save that now we have oh that indigo I think it's indigo but now let's go ahead and select our last index right here and we have red see how cool that is so now every single button is reflective upon that theme cool now what if we want every single loader in our app to be a certain kind of loader well the man time provider allows us to be able to do that so going back inside of our theme right here in, in top of our colors I will do loader and inside of strings we have three options here bars dots and ovals let's just see what the bars looks like and now we have a bar loader if I were to do oops, dots, we should see a whole bunch of dots. And if I were to do oval, it'll go back to the original of oval. Awesome. All right, before I conclude this tutorial, let me just quickly talk to you about the nested Mantine providers. This is also really cool is that let's say you have some components that you don't want the parent Mantine provider to inherit all the styling from, you can create a nested Mantine provider. So right here, we have this parent Mantine provider with a font family of Georgia Seref. And let's say we want a button that is a whole different font family. All we have to do is we just put in the Mantine provider tag and encapsulate whatever we want with that. And it will inherit the nested Mantine providers theme instead of the parents. So in our case, if we just copy this piece of code right here and we paste it underneath our buttons, we'll see that when we go into it, it'll, number one, not inherit any of the colors. It will have its own font family. All right, so that concludes the tutorial. I hope that this made sense to you. I hope that you have a better understanding of how to use a Mantine provider at a high level. And I would highly recommend that you go back into the documentation and you try out some of this stuff more for yourself. That way you'll have a strengthened understanding of how to use the provider. In the next tutorial, we'll be learning how to actually use the dark theme and light theme on the click of a button. So stay tuned for that. And if you enjoyed this, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one.